Let's see, this is going. Oh, we're good. All right, here we go. Here's a song that someone wrote for me last night. <clears throat> Hanging round down LA by myself. I, self, I ran into a lefty who thinks it's all about the wealth. And then I said, two plus two is four. And then he said, that's true, but I'll ignore. Two plus two is candy here. Beauty's fat and has blonde hair. Kids decide if they are queer. It's their decision. Dummy, this surely is a dream. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I don't, know, I don't know how the song is played, but hang on, let's see what that is. Mama, this surely, Mama, this surely is a dream. As Mama, this surely is a dream. Yeah, yeah, Mama, this must be my. All right, I, there's more lyrics. I, I think this is hysterical. It's so true, it's almost not even funny. D dummy, this surely is a dream. Yeah, up is down and blue is green. Yeah, dummy, this, dummy, this surely is a dream. And then, hanging around LA by myself. I was making salient points, but it was like into a shelf. And then I said, it was like talking to a shelf. And then I said, speaking facts and then you said your words are an attack two plus two is candy here beauty's fat and has blue hair kids decide if they are queer it's their decision mama this surely is a dream yeah, yeah, mama, this must be a bad dream. That was sent to me by, I got to give credit where credit is due. I'm going to work on that because I think that's profoundly funny. All right, where did she send it? Oh, it was written by a woman. Turns out women can be really funny. See, just not as often. That's all I'm saying. I think it was by a woman. I, I'm a, it, it, First name, L. L. Erickson. Uh, I'm gonna. I, I'm now fascinated if that was a woman or not because uh, I really want to give credit to where credit's due. Mama, this surely is a dream. That's such a good song. I mean, the lyrics of that. I, I, hanging around downtown by myself, and I got so much time to sit and think about myself, so I hung myself because self, 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 self is eternal hell. Self, 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 self. All right. Who sent that to you? Someone, oh, someone just wrote me. Yeah, by the way, Facebook's the worst place you can contact me. Just to let you know, I get, I get, oh, yeah, Lara, woman. A woman wrote that. See? They can be funny and profound. It says, hi, I want to buy the free Tommy single and I'm struggling with iTunes. Not sure if it's because I'm on Samsung. Is there any other way to buy it? I don't know. I'll write to the dude right now. Hang on. Oh, it's right here. I gotta. I gotta. I'll, I'm, I'm gonna post this link right now. The dude just sent it to me. It's on iTunes. Here we go. Copy link. And then I got some stuff to talk about. I'm not gonna do like some big three-hour show today. I'm a lot more mentally uh, uh, stable today. I got a lot of sleep last night. I went to bed at 9:30. It was great. Let me um, put this in the description. Support. Tome. Common Sins Defense Fund by buying this song. For you cynical, uh, for you cynical, what should we call it? You cynical what? I just want to say uh, 
something vulgar. But I, I'm my new thing. I'm I'm trying to uh, challenge myself to not say anything vulgar and see if I can be as de, de, uh, decisive. For you cynical poppin' jays. Oh, Stanley Moon just said I caressed the like button. Go ahead and go ahead and uh, hit that button. Hit that like button. Spread this thing. Let's let's blast this up. 240 people right now. Let's get over a K quick. Nannies. For you cynical nannies. Uh, um, that's not even a good... I don't even know what I'm saying. For you cynical curmudgeons. That's a good one. I like that. Zero goes to me. It all goes to where it belongs. So, by the, I don't want to say fucking. So, what should I say? So, by the fucking song. So, by the bloody, bloody song. Uh, oh, Bill O'Reilly used Pop and Jay. I've been, I've been using Pop and Jay since the 90s. Bloody. By the bloody song, or you can just. Use that money to do what you would do with it and buy more. What's what? All right. Let, dude, this is fun. It's like Mad Libs for comedy. Uh, what, what's what's our pathetic curmudgeon normally going to do with the money? Or you could just go ahead and buy more soy. Soy. Uh, soy meth. Soy meth. Meth made out of soy. And also, oh, this is a crazy, this is one of those crazy links because it's from Facebook. All right, let me click it so I can get a clean one. And then I'll, I'll focus on what we're talking about. I've, I, I'm, I've been so fascinated by people lately. Just fascinated. Like, not angry. I'm actually, some of my anger is starting to, uh, to go away. Because, uh. I'm starting to understand why people act like insane people. All right, here we go. That's a better link. I'm about to explain why. <laughs> There's people that, that, that their reaction to me is perfectly reasonable if you understand where they're coming from. You know, like that's one reason why I get so mad at government policies because if you look at the black community, for example, not that there is a community, but you know what I'm saying. If you do a demographic study, uh, I think it's like only 17% are born now into a family with where their parents are married. And I think that's a massive problem. I think a lot of people think that's a problem. A lot of people know it's a problem. It's for sure a problem. But that is a rational decision if you're incentivized to do that. And that's, the, that's why I always um, rant against the state and rant against... Um, certain policies because it's not because they're stupid. I mean, long term, it's a stupid move. But if you think about it, think about all the things that we're susceptible to from ice cream to uh, watching a, uh, a Netflix series all night when we know we have to wake up in the morning. You know what I mean? If you financially incentivize broken marriages, you'll see a decrease in marriage. And that's why I think it's important to not blame no, no. Every human is accountable. Like, blame the person. Don't get me wrong. Be like, do what's right. But it's important to see the roots. For example, I, someone sent me this, and it's, it's, it makes everything so obvious. Look at this. Comic obsessed with Asian dicks and demeaning Asian women insists he's not racist. That's so over the top. Listen, I've had a million of these, right? I've had a million of these write-ups where it says like uh, racist comedian, alt-right comedian, stuff like that. That's so obviously crazy and she means it. This is real. People that don't understand comedy really think that. And like from her perspective, I am that. Imagine if you didn't understand jokes and one of the, one of the, tweet, one of the tweets she uh, referenced is I said... I just realized edamame is soybean, so that's why Asian men have been dickless and hairless for thousands of years. Okay, if you're not, if you don't have a sense of humor, that 
That sounds like I am cr- I'm crazy. If you have a sense of humor, that's really funny. And it, it, it has nothing to do with anything serious. Uh, another one she referenced was, uh, you're tall, you should play basketball. You're an Asian, you should be giving backroom hand jobs at a nail salon. If you don't understand, and, I, and, I, and I'm starting to understand what type of person doesn't get jokes. It's people that can, a, a required program in your mind for comedy is to be able to run more than one program at once. Like pretend we're a computer and you have on, like right now I have OBS and YouTube. That way I can live stream. OBS is what allows me to live stream. It's a program. And then YouTube is on uh, Safari browser. And so both together allow me to YouTube. Now imagine a computer that can only do one or the other. So comedy requires multi layers happening at the same time. It's almost like when you combine paint and you get a new color, right? So that joke requires people to understand that the focus has nothing to do with Asians. It has to do with the exaggerated reality of what it would sound like if people treated races the way people tr- treated height. So you're tall, you should play basketball. You're Asian, you should give hand jobs in a nail salon. Now, someone who can only run one program in their head at a time thinks, he thinks Asians all give hand jobs at nail salons. Do you understand? I hope this is helping some people. A lot of people, there's no way you understand what I'm saying. And I've given up on those people. It's all good. I can't live a happy life if I'm trying to impress or be friends with or appease people that can't understand what I'm saying. There's just no way I can survive that way because I've realized that they're not going to change. You know, It's like trying to get a woman to love you that doesn't love you. As many roses as you want to get her, she's just going to be like, She'd feel guilty about him. She'd be like, no, he sent more roses. You could buy her like a castle and she'd be like, just give back the castle. That's how I feel about, st- not, I'm not even going to say stupid anymore because stupid carries with it some, some weight. It's people that can't run more than one program in their mind. Like to me, that joke is so obvious. And to some people, it's not. To some people, they just see an angry looking man saying that Asians, like my, my stereotype of Asians is that they give hand jobs in the back of nail salons. That's probably what? One in a hundred thousand, one in 500,000. Let's see how many nail salons are doing backroom hand jobs in the country. I don't know. Someone could do the math on that, but it's a very small amount of Asians giving backroom hand jobs, but it is a, a valid stereotype that most backroom hand jobs in America are done by people from the continent of Asia. It's would be a ridiculous assumption. That's like saying uh, most, if not all, school shooters have no connection to their biological father at all. It's true. Making the jump to, like my mother, or why did I say my mother? I, I did that twice. That's a very weird uh, Freudian thing. My wife <laughs> um, has no connection to her biological father. So to say people with no connection to their biological father are school shooters is the same as saying if you're an Asian, you give backroom hand jobs, which is the same as saying if you're tall, you play basketball. You understand? And I'm so used to my mind and how easy that is to see, how effortless and fun it is. And I'm surrounded by so many intelligent people And so many people that understand that, that I can't even fathom not understanding that. I just, I, it's the same with this, the, the suicide talk about, um, about Bourdain, where I call it cowardly. I can't fathom truly being angry at me for saying that. And I've seen so much online, like that video is viral as hell now. That's, it's just Go, 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 go. If you look at my YouTube page, like it's already well over 100,000 views and uh, now on all kinds of platforms. And and there's been a lot of support, but also a lot of hate. And I welcome that. That's why I'm not going to take it down at all. I, I think it's great. I think it's great that people are talking about this. But I have to really, really get to a bizarre mental frame to understand how someone could watch that and think, I hate Owen. 
for saying that. Or that it's the, it's the non-compassionate view to say, he's free now. Anthony Bourdain had, de- he had depression. It's not his fault. And now he is free. To me, that's like saying Hitler did too much meth. It's not his fault. Fu- I, I just, I know that that's an exaggeration and, and Hitler references are so played out. And I'm not, I, I mean, c- explaining myself to dumb people, it, it may be the, my one Achilles heel. I, no, I've meant many Achilles heel, heels. That sounded arrogant. But the constant explaining things it would be as if being a comedian in 2018 is insane. If I had known what it would be now as a child, I never would have wanted to be a comedian. I'm telling you guys that right now. I still love comedy as much as I ever did. It would seem as almost a um, self-destructive choice in career. It already was like one in a million makes it in comedy. I did that. You know, it already was like, what are you doing with your life? Like, why are you trying something that's so rare? Now it's like one in a million makes it. And out of those people, they all have to become insane, apparently. And they all have to appeal to the dumbest person in the world. You know, I was was, uh, listening to somebody talk about why Broadway is so crazy leftist, right? If you watch the Tony Awards and uh, Andrew Garfield being like, just make the cake. You know, and, and Ben Shapiro had a great point. He's like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a movie and I'm going to raise money and you're going to have to play uh, the cake baker. And you're going to have to be the Christian uh, who wants to bake the cake and the movie is going to be why that you're the bad guy. And you have to do it because you're an actor, just like they're a cake baker. And if, and if uh, he's like, I want you to play that, so you have to do that. He's like, that's crazy, right? That, that, that's absurd. But then you got to remember two plus two is candy with these people. It's not absurd. If you're motivated by just praise and money, so anyway, why can they go so far left and still survive? Because there's not that many of those guys. I've fallen for this a lot where I see um, where I see all this and I think it's like everybody and then I'll freak out on social media or something and be like, why does everyone want to turn kids trans? It's a tiny amount of people, but here's, here's how it works. Normal people like us, We'll be like, oh, these lefties, ah, eh, whatever. But I'll still catch a play when I'm in New York, right? Isn't that what you do? You see a play? Those lefties would never do that. They're like, you must condemn everybody or we won't go. And since most actors are raging homos, you, you need the gays. And they have the most disposable income in Manhattan. By far. Double income, no kids. You know? Double income, no kids. You know, the fact that uh, heterosexual people have children, don't give me, it's like gays can have children too. Yeah, it's just like Asians can give hand jobs. One in a hundred thousand, I get it. But um, in general, parents have children. And now that you have, uh, you know, the modern indentured servitude of this uh, school system, college, kids are uh, very expensive. And so the most disposable income are double income, no kids. Like in a, in a, in a really well-designed heterosexual marriage, you have the woman stays home with the child, the man works his ass off, and um, yeah, so that's way, th- picture that with like two gay guys that are both like real estate moguls. They have like just millions of dollars and no kids being like, daddy, can I get a bike? No, it's just friends wanting Coke. So, um, so, and I'm a capitalist. I'm a pure free market guy, right? So I have to respect that, that, that the gays are a ridiculously valuable demographic for selling people stuff, especially stuff they don't need. Uh, you know, it is what it is. So just know that. Just know that. Just know that there's, pe- there's a huge amount of people out there, though, that don't get jokes. Their brain is 2G. And I don't know, and, and I, I'm starting to lean hard away from the uh, average IQ shit. I went, I think, I, I'm not saying Charles Murray isn't right or accurate in his uh, reporting of it. I don't think that there's any racist motivation to scientists reporting um, IQ bell curves and stuff, but I, it's like, I don't think that's really a factor when it comes to like a lot of these things. I think. You're, you're trying to put out a fire with like a tea dropper. Like just, 
That's like the, imagine if someone is illiterate and you say because the Irish have a higher rate of being colorblind, which is true. My dad is partially colorblind from uh, his Irish offshoot, had a lot of colorblindness in their family. And I think that there is a slightly higher rate of colorblindness in, um, in Irish people. Okay, so now you have factors where uh, there's a slightly higher rate of color blindness to make illiteracy, or they were raised without a mom, their nutrition sucks, and their culture praises victims. You see what I'm saying? It's like, I think that this this plummeting of intelligence in America and, and uh, the ability of understanding context and all this stuff is, is because of the failure of the uh, family. I think the feminist movement got way too many women to work that shouldn't. Oh, you don't think women should work? No. If they want to, of course they can. Men should also be able to be a stay-at-home dad. Of course. Is that ideal? No. I, my tits don't make milk. And you're not as strong as me physically. You want, I mean, those are facts. Don't get me wrong. There might be a little tiny dude who has a big, strong wife. Uh, and he makes milk out of his tits. Fine. Some Asians give hand jobs in nail salons and some tall people do play basketball. But I just think these kids grew up to peep with uh, with being raised by people that don't care about them as much. And I know that some nannies are cool. And, you know, I I, I loved Maria. You know, I, some of my friends were raised by by these uh, these Hispanic nannies. And I, and I get it. They probably have a warm bond and all that. But nobody loves you like your blood. Nobody will ever love you like your mom did. Not in like that suffocating way, but in just that way, you know? I'm going to read a couple super chats and then I will continue. Oh, we're almost over 700 people. Nice. These people cannot tell fantasy from reality. No, but they truly can't. And I'm starting to see it almost as like a, like a handicap. Like for a while, I thought that they were like intentionally trying to like hurt me. <laughs> they don't get it. And, and their motivations, it's different types. There's the people that don't get comedy and there's people that are motivated by just pure selfish drive where, where two plus two, two equals four. But if we say, if you say five, we'll give you candy, but it's four. And someone else would be like five. Why would you say four candy? Like that's, that's the most boiled down way to describe postmodernism or, or like any type of like truly self-centered world view. Even objectivism, you know, some of my Ayn Rand um, fanatics who I'm very close with and I have a lot of respect for Ayn Rand and all that, but uh, objectivism can sometimes have a similar thing to it where it's like, but I got gold and you're like, but now we don't have any fish. All right. Hey man, think you'll be able to check out my standup set. Yes. Yes. I, I even downloaded it. I, I, I'm trying to break the habit of, um, of like during a stream being like, we'll do it tomorrow and then not doing it. Because in my defense, I I get so fascinated by what happened in the news or like what what I see that I, I'm like, oh, I'll talk about that and that and that. And then I just kind of just move on. Uh, but I want to do that. It's 10 minutes long though, so only a, a portion. It's from Corey. Hey, Big Bear, I'm on the app as Hermit Bear and would like to make it official. Much love to you and all the bears. Five verse forever. Uh, welcome, Hermit Bear. Thank you. That's a... Dude, fivers in the in the uh, the honey pots, like tipping a, a piano player to bar, or uh, an Asian that just give you a hand job in the back of a a parlor. It's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, the Unbearables app, register there at unbearablesapp.com. We have Unbearable News Network that's just been crushing lately. I think it's it's so funny, and we're gonna be making news videos. I've just uh, you know had a lot on my plate, and I'm sure a lot of you guys too do as well. All right, so let's keep talking. There's some more hilarious stuff. So yesterday I, I realized this picture just makes me laugh. So I'm growing stuff to put on my steak. And in the background, you can see I've been shooting a, uh, a little punching bag with my arrows. And for those of you that want to know why, it's because I'm working on my midget hunting skills. And I'm trying to be more politically correct. So I know they are called People McNuggets. But they're, they, they, they have the same frame as a, as like a 40 pound heavy bag. 
So I think I'm being pretty good at it. Not the good ones. I'm, I'm talking about like the, the evil ones. You know, the evil ones that will come out of your forest at night and, and take your firstborn. Isn't that fascinating? Think about that. There's, there's a huge percentage of the population that just heard what I said and was like, and they really believe it. I, I just, it's remarkable. The only thing close to it that I've experienced is talking to someone who does thick cockney. They have this weird thing where they'll be like, oh, Roy, it's like Owen, uh, piano Dowen. The reason I'm having a hard time explaining it is because I still don't understand. They'll like take a word from the previous sentence and like rhyme it with a random word. You know, they'll be like, they'll be like, oh, Sally over there likes Venus. And it's like, what? It's like, weenus. She's a whore. And you're like, so you just rhyme words with something. And then there's like five more rules to it. And me watching that or kind of like uh, me watching cricket. I have no idea what's happening. But here's the difference. I know I don't. I would never go on a cricket field and be like, he was out. And then being like, oh, raw. It's not the, the rules of uh, cricket. You, you hit the, the ball and, and then you run here and do a random thing. And then you, 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 you say hello to the queen and you, and you bend down. And then you go. No, I'd just be like, I don't get all that. If you are constantly angered by comedians, there's a public service announcement. If you're constantly like, oh my God. This guy's obsessed with a chicken crossing the road. Don't ever comment on comedy. It's like me commenting on cricket. Like, just know you don't get it. And it's like that for uh, my cultural outrages, too, as far as uh, political correctness and all that stuff. Feel free to join the conversation, right? But unless you know the history of this stuff, it's like it's, you're so below the conversation it would be like if I was watching MMA with my friends who like MMA and I'm just like, why don't you just only kick people? Because that's what I think. In my mind, I'm like, just constant kicking. Constant kicking. They'd be like, and that's why I know not to say that. And even worse, if I say that and people are like, "You're what, what are you talking about? Me being like, you should be kicked off the internet. The, the arrogance of not understanding uh, a skill is so fascinating to me. I'm starting to get more compassion for these people because I don't think it's as much of a planned attack as I once thought. I think there's people that are so deficient that I couldn't even imagine that was possible. You ever feel that way where you get paranoid about something or you think there's a conspiracy because you couldn't imagine a person so stupid that you thought it was a grand plan? That happens to me sometimes where I'm like, Oh my God, you just don't understand. Like you don't know what World War II was about or it's like, oh my God. <laughs> it's just, it's just fascinating to me. And I'm not letting them off the hook. It's not like saying, oh, he was depressed so he can kill himself and he had a nine-year-old to raise. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I finally understand that it's not I don't know. It's just weird. It's, it's like someone being in a wheelchair and being, a, being mad that they won't walk with you. And someone being like, he's in a wheelchair. And you're like, yeah, but he's only doing that because he doesn't want to walk. These people are in mental wheelchairs. And the arrogant... LA is turning into just one of those sex cults from the 90s. From an outside perspective, sometimes I wonder if like the Mad Libs thing, like our uh, Choose Your Own Adventure books... If I had stayed in LA and didn't leave, would I have been this crazy there? Not crazy me here. Like, LA is crazy now. And I wonder, like, would that have been me? It's kind of like the same thoughts that I have about totalitarian dictatorships. Like, if I was um, in Soviet Russia, would I have fallen, followed Stalin's orders and just put my countrymen in a gulag? And I think the answer typically is yes. Because the amount of people that opposed Hitler or opposed Stalin or opposed the, the writings of Marx uh, were so small that statistically you, you would have been a monster most likely if you were raised in a certain environment and exposed to these things and blah, blah, blah. If I stayed in LA, you know, my ego wants to say, of course, I would have seen through it and not ended up like these people. But scientifically, of course, I would have. Like to hear... Some of these people that I used to think were such legends 
And I know they possess qualities of strength and fortitude and honor and stuff. And to see what they've fallen to, I'm like, would that have been me? Like, would I have been saying drumpf? And would I have been saying that like, oh, the Russia collusion will, will come out any day now still? Like, would I be that guy? Would I say that everything's racist? I don't know. I hope not, but I, I also think that I, I would. Because statistically, that's what it is. It's the same reason I don't want to be a president or a leader. I mean, I'm a leader. I'm a natural leader, but I don't want to be a political leader. Like, I don't want a military. I don't want a... Um, like an air, air, like an aircraft carrier or anything like that. I don't want that because I think that I would, I would. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example of the, of the humility of Donald Trump. Like this. Look at this. Trump tweets: Robert De Niro, very low IQ individual, has received too many shots to the head by real boxers in movies. I watched him last night and truly believe, behave. He may believe he may be punch drunk. I guess he doesn't. Realize the economy is the best it's ever been with employment being at an all-time high and many companies pouring back into the country. Wake up, Punchy. Okay, first off, this is hysterically funny. Punchy is just a home run. And to hear people say that Donald Trump is a bully or, no pun intended, he's punching down, Robert De Niro on national television in front of millions of people started a fuck Trump rant. In this dynamic, Donald Trump is not the bully. Donald Trump is in something called an honor culture, which I've realized I am as well. Uh, Scottish people, uh, as much as we don't want to admit it, a lot of the Arabs, a lot of the Muzzies over there, similar culture. So a lot of the American South, and it it came historically from people who um, had animals, you know, herdsmen. And it was because if someone disrespected you or did something to you, you had to reciprocate or else they would take your sheep. And it became like ingrained in the culture. Like um, you can see it in Scotland and Saudi Arabia, just obviously to much different degrees. (laughs) No pun intended to the heat in Saudi Arabia. Same with the American South, because the American South was uh, uh, settled by um, Scottish Highlandsmen and British people and Irish people and a lot of people from that area in the 1700s and 1600s and early 1800s were part of a very, very extreme honor culture where if someone talks shit about you, you had to publicly respond or else they do it more and more and more. But in like real high stakes situations, it's about your sheep because farmers like the Sam Harris type, and I'm only using that as a, an example of a culture, not that he's an actual farmer. They don't understand honor culture. Like Sam Harris, I remember he said specifically on a podcast, he's like, if someone disrespects me in line at Starbucks or steps on my shoe, I, I can't imagine why you anyone would respond. Just that's the that that would cause more, you know. And, and I'm listening to it. I'm like, oh, you don't understand because farmers would have lines in in the in the in the dirt. Right. This is all in uh, Thomas Sowell's book, Black Redneck, White Liberal. But I'm just giving you a quick summary because I know a lot of you motherfuckers aren't going to read the book. Farmers would have like lines in the dirt where it's like, this is my square where I grow my soybeans. (laughs) And then I chug them. And so a lot of farmers with like established lines didn't develop honor culture because if someone came on your property, English common law or a lot of other common laws, you had a right to kill them. Uh, just by by trespassing, or you would go to the government and uh, arbitrate it, and you would uh, rely more of a managerial uh, situation where people were managed. With uh, goat herding, there were no lines; it's where the grass was. So yeah, you had to develop an extreme culture based around honor, where it's like, "Don't fuck with my sheep, and I won't fuck with your sheep." And that's my policy for, for most online interactions and all that stuff. And people call me like, you're so cold, Big Bear. Like, you are really just mean. I'm like, I'm responding to a much meaner thing. You know, people will tell me I should kill myself all the time. And then I'll do a funny joke about how their mom will suck anyone for a car or something. And then I'll be called the bad guy. And they're like, but you're better than that. It's like, no one's better or worse than anything. If someone wants your sheep, There's no hierarchy. There is no like, 
It's like, oh, Big Bear, you are in a position of power because you're smarter and you have a lot of followers. It's like, there's no position of power in this situation. If someone comes at you, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of trolls I don't engage with because if their intention is to get attention from my engagement and they're just trying to provoke like mosquitoes, or no, ticks. If you pull a tick out, that's when it dumps all the poison in you, right? So there's certain insects that require that, that if you attack them, it, 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 um, it'll give them what they want. You know, if you hit a dandelion, that's what it wants, you know, but then there's mosquitoes, you know, and if someone's like, why'd you just kill that mosquito? You're a thousand times the size of it. I'm like, cause it stung me. And I think that that's why Trump relates to people that are part of an honor culture and doesn't at all when people aren't. There's people that look at this tweet and they go, they're just like, why would he say that? And I trust that they really don't know. And I was raised in a family and in a heritage that was like, if someone hits you, you hit them back or they will keep hitting you. And Trump is really good at it. This is hilarious. And it's probably true. De Niro's retarded. And so I don't want to be president or a dictator or any of that stuff because I would be nervous that I would send a drone to kill De Niro. Like, I don't know what that amount of, um, of violent power would do to me. I really don't. I know that uh, social power doesn't affect me. Like social status doesn't affect me. I've, I've been through trials in my life where I've come out the right way. I've seen it. I've seen people be like, oh, well, if you say that, powerful, you will lose power and influence. You will, you will be kicked off Twitter. You will be uh, excommunicated from our cocktail parties and our fun, uh, our fun street orgies. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm out. And so socially, I'm a good leader because I know that social power doesn't seem to affect me like it does a lot of other people. I don't know about violence because I've never been put in that position. If I had an aircraft carrier and someone said they were going to that, that my, my, uh, they're going to fuck my wife after she leaves me because I'm not funny anymore. I don't know if I would send a drone. Maybe. And I don't want to be tested. Because I'm, I don't know, I just don't. It's kind of like these utopians, these, these, these Sam Harris types where, where they're like, Donald Trump is, I mean, and then you're like, oh, so you like Hillary Clinton? It's like, no, of course I don't like Hillary Clinton. It's like, then who do you like? It's do you want to know the answer? They just, they, they're dying to say it, but they never say it. If you're like, who do you want for president? Eventually, the, they, they would, if they were ever honest, they'd just go, me. They want to rule. They think that they're the only person that knows the right answer. And that if people did what they wanted, everything would be great. And that if only this thing was changed. Guys, if I was ruler, I would I would I would round up pedophiles like anybody that 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 was ever on Twitter that said like there's nothing wrong with pedophilia or uh, or uh, you know minor attracted person any of that I I would round them up and I, I I don't know I don't know would I execute them all maybe and that's why one person shouldn't have that you know what I'm saying I don't know I may kill them all. That's why it's like, don't give me that power, man. That's why it's like, there's certain things that I just, I don't allow myself to do because I, I think that I trust myself in certain environments and in certain mentalities and not in other ones. There, I just know that. Like if I'm tired and there's ice cream in the house, I'll eat it. I have incredible self-control if there's no ice cream in the house or if I sleep. Either of those, I'm fine. If I'm like, 40 hours no sleep and there's ice cream in the house no matter what I tell myself I will eat it so that's why I don't have ice cream in the house that's why uh because it's the same reason I don't do 30 shots when I'm on the road I don't know where I'll end up all right here we go next step what is this Oh, this is a little thing. It's uh, Anthony Bourdain says the worst mistake when cooking steak 
Uh, how about you don't make hanger steak? <laughs> That'd be funny if he was like, all right, so when you're making a steak, the thing you don't want to do is put something around your neck and hang yourself from a bathroom. Bathroom hook. It's a hilarious joke. I, I truly don't care if you find it offensive. It means you don't speak my language. It's like uh, someone on Instagram said that Joe Rogan talked shit about me on an episode of his podcast. And that he said that I need to grow that grow up or something. And I wrote, it's funny coming from a guy that plays ninja with his friends all day. A ninjutsu joke or jujitsu or whatever. And uh, so a couple of guys were like, all right, I'll, I'll look for it. I'm like, dude, if he said that, I would have heard it from people. There's no way no one would have written that to me. And it's 2018, I get it. I, I expect pretty much almost anything at this point. But a guy like that, that I hold respect for, and that we all have faults, we all have whatever, but I have to hear him say it and know it's a fact before I would ever truly insult the man, you know? And so, what was that? What was that? What was my point? Oh yeah, one of the guys was like, oh, then why'd you immediately attack him? I'm like, dude, he listens to Nickelback. I make fun of him for that all the time. He's got fucking weird ape knuckles. Like that isn't mean. That's how men talk. That's how like non-soy PC, non-run to daddy government, Men talk. It's how you show affection. Not only isn't it mean, it's how you show affection. And and Joe's totally part of that culture. Joe has that bit about how uh, men talk shit to your face and are nice behind your back. And that's so true. And, and women are the opposite. Women are nice to your face and talk shit behind your back. Where it's like a man to your face is like, you're, you're a fat piece of shit. <laughs> and then behind your back... That's how I am with dudes. I'm like, oh man, he's he's great. He's like one of the best people I know, man. And then to 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 their to his face, I'd be like, you're seriously like the bear Jew. I was, I'm like, you're just you're a, you're a stupid idiot. Um, but behind his back, I'd be like, how dare you talk about Jews? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and so people listened to it and said that. He never referenced me by name. And then someone was like, oh yeah, but I heard it live. I promise. Uh, he must have edited it out. I'm like, guys, I I need so much evidence to ever respond to an accusation to a person that I know he's in LA. I know he has a lot of power. I know he's susceptible to a lot of stuff, but I, I consider Joe a friend and I have a lot of respect for Joe and I'm not going to pull any triggers until I hear something concrete. The reason that I was responding to Sam Triple yesterday is because I listened to the man say uh, that he doesn't support me. And by the way, you don't have to support me at all. Don't think that you owe me any loyalty. But to say that when you don't have to say anything, it's a sheep. It's a. It's not a sheep steal. It's not a sheep bang. It's almost like you jerked off one of my sheep. Hang on. Let's see. Uh, Joe would tell it to your face. Yeah, of course. That's what I think. Unless any of you guys heard it, that I trust. Progressive dad, what up, yo? Uh, let me know. Because, dude, if he did, I obviously would. I'm fine with it. Hang on. Rogan, when he talks about climate change. I know, but see, everybody has a right to say their shit. I have no problem with any of that shit. For me, it's like, did somebody say, like, fuck Owen? And at that point, that's a sheep situation. And you have to respond. I was watching on the news that the Milky Galaxy is collapsing in on our solar system to the gravitational pull of your waistline. That's funny. He says he talks shit about you to your face and not behind your back. Oh, about Bearju? Rogan is okay, but he's kind of a coward. Uh, but you won't agree with everyone else. Oh, yeah, I wrote a sketch about that. What's Joe being accused of? Nothing. I was using that as an example. By the way, don't like take that and run with it like crazy. It's a really good example if you listen to it in context don't start some shit because i think that's what these people were doing they're just trying to start shit with uh with me and him um no it's just people online said joe talks shit and then people listened to the episode and said that he didn't and i'm like i need so much evidence to make an accusation about someone i consider a friend that um i i don't even I would, see, that's that's the trap people people fall into. At that point, they'd freak out and just be like, 
Hang on, but in Joe's defense, lots of people who come on a show are against climate change don't have their research it together. I love the guy. I mean, I thought climate change was one of our biggest threats to civilization until about six months ago, guys. It's a very easy mistake to make. Because, like, the media is so good at tricking people. I was 100% sure that that was true. I was sh for sure. I, I thought, I don't know. I just thought that that, that that was absolutely true. And then you have to, like, dig and really think about it. And then it becomes so obvious. None of the predictions happened. If it was that big of a threat, I don't know. I'm not going to go down that road. It's all good. Randall Carson was Joe's best guest regarding climate change. Yeah, and I support Joe Rogan's show a ton. And I had a horrifying experience the last time I was on there. And um, I still support the hell out of it because what he's doing is good for the world. He's bringing on people. He is doing what people actually ask for. So when people say, all right, have people with diverse ideas. Name one show that rivals Joe Rogan. And that to me is great. Like he'll have people on that will infuriate you no matter what position you hold. If you're a conservative, he'll have on a um, progressive. If you're an anti-government guy, he'll have on a socialist. If you are um, a feminist, he'll have on a, a MGTOW guy. You know, he's, he, he does that. You know, that's part of his equation. And you got to respect that. Yeah, Ruben does that. Corolla does that. A Crowder does that. Um, what Rogan does that the, that like Crowder and, uh, McGinnis and some of those guys do differently is he'll vibe more with the, he'll vibe more with the, um, with the person who's on. It's almost hypnotic. He almost will start mirroring them. And that's a persuasion tool. You know, some people call it unethical, but who the fuck is anyone to say anything, but what, what he'll do is he'll be like, if he has a socialist on, I'll be like, yeah, I mean, everyone should help each other. If he has on a zero government guy, he's like, yeah, who has the right to, to exhibit force? And what that does is it brings the person out for three hours uh, to a more honest position of what they really are. And then he lets, and then he lets his audience decide what they believe. And that's why you know, I, I have more of a right to bitch about Joe Rogan than anybody. Because last time I was on, Kurt Metzger just interrupted every single thing I said. And Rogan was like, let him finish. And I still don't. Because despite what some people accuse me of, I'm not ego motivated. I'm not. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, oh. Rogan's comments were 98% like, Joe, what the fuck? I love Owen. What the fuck? Like, literally, they all had my back. It was a, it could have been a... It could have been in a time for me if, if I was ego motivated to just execute. And you, you're not going to execute a guy like Joe, like uh, socially at all. But I could have taken a, a, a bite out of him. But it would have been unfair. Joe didn't deserve that. It would have been me being a dick. It would have been me taking power and not authenticity. So I, in my response video of my experience on the Joe Rogan show, I thought I was very fair and very honest and I didn't take shots um, because I respect his overall picture uh, picture of what he's doing. Dude, Ian just wrote, Owen wants Joe executed. I love that. It's, it's so funny because that's such a funny theme. It's a funny meme if you get the joke. If not, people literally, and there's a population that's like, that's real now. Rogan is open to discussion and new ideas of interest of obtaining info. Yeah, yeah. And what he does, he's not like this crazy flip-flopper as much as people think. It literally is a persuasion tactic and it's a way to open someone's mind up to really saying some shit. And that's why he can have on Elon Musk one week and Crowder the next week and me and then like some like MMA guy and then a guy who heard sheep and then some dude who just loves ice. The way he can do that is kind of like a, a womanizer of the mind. Like someone who truly is a womanizer or someone who has sex with a lot of women uh, isn't what people think. It's not this like, um, it's not like this uh, this uh, Z28 bad guy from uh, Karate Kid like, yo ladies, get in. It, it It's mirroring. It, it would just, like if a girl's like, I hate, 
uh, Steve uh, Springsteen. Even if you love Springsteen, you just go, yeah, I mean, he has taken some real turns uh, in his most recent albums. I mean, that one song is just, and you just mirror, you mirror. And that doesn't work long term in a relationship because you can't just keep mirroring, but short term it works. It's very charming. And so it's a great quality for an interviewer. It's a great quality if you like one night stands with sex or one night stands with ideas. Um, I'll, there's a few topics that Joe can't mirror though. If, if someone wants to make weed illegal, he can't go with that. He like physically can't do that. Joe is a big government tool. I've also seen him talk about how there shouldn't be a government. That's the thing. If anything, if he's a shill for anybody, it's big weed. And I don't even know if big weed's a thing. And I don't even know if shill is a thing. <laughs> Joe won't admit science is corrupt. Right, because he thinks that's the right answer, I think. I'm not going to assume anything in the dude's mind at all. But if I were to guess, I would say it's a lot like the same fallacy that male feminists fall down. Not the rapists. Like there's a lot of um, male feminists that are legitimate rapists hiding like camouflage. But there's some male feminists that think it's the right answer. They're like, well, this is the right answer. This is the good answer. Because people have convinced them that being a male feminist means you're, you're good. And really, it's this backdoor sneaky way of taking away everything that women love. <laughs> it's the same with science. It's like... Growing up in the era that that I did and Joe did, and Joe even worse, I was, I was talking to my boy Kevin about this the other day. To, to us, like conservative, like religious conservatism seemed very corrupt and seemed very like, it was like the guy saying like, the answer was always like God or Jesus or something were typically the hypocrites and they were typically the ones that wouldn't uh, go with obvious science sometimes. And so we got a little uh, imprinted on that a little bit. That's why I've had issues with allowing myself to be religious because I'm instinctively religious, but I had like this, um, but I don't like big church, you know, I'm American. I don't like uh, DC, you know what I mean? So it's like dudes in our position that were raised in the Northeast back when Someone said, God told me to tell you pretty much they wanted your stuff for free and they were having an affair. So it's easy to become um, cynical to those people and think that science is always the right answer. But then when you really, really dig and see like a big time scale and you see like how much the media has distorted that, you realize that science is nothing more than a godless religion that that's except the difference between Christianity and science is hell will be on earth. <laughs> and Christian Christianity is scientific with the exception of, uh, um, the basic faith required to believe in, in God and, and certain, um, things. Cr Christianity is more scientific than science. A lot of times, cause it's less influenced. You got one book. You don't have a new peer-reviewed study every eight days. And it's all paid for by the people that we found are really good. Now you're losing me? Well, then tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. I'll tell you my perspective on this. Because I understand how that might sound a little uh, wacky. Where someone's like, okay, well, you think Jesus turns water into wine. But like the earth spinning around the sun. Dude, I've heard all the straw mans. I've heard all of them. You, you, do you think I don't know that? Like that that's what people would say where it's like Noah's Ark, two animals, 600 years old. All we're saying is food pyramid. A food pyramid was upside down. But what I'm trying to say is when you have a static code that can only be changed by interpretation, that's so much more stable. And also um, Christians started science. I talked about it in the last one. I'm not going to go too far in this because some people right now are like, no, fuck you, man. Fuck you, dude. And I'm just, I'm just not, uh, science is religion, says the man using a computer. Right. Okay. Good point. So, big S. I, 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 that, that's a really good point, but big S versus small S. It's a, like, I have liberal qualities. I'm not a liberal. Is that, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm liberal. I have an insanely open mind insanely like 
If someone has an idea, I'm like, whoa, no way. Wait a minute, I can live stream on Pinterest? Like I literally, my mind is wide open. Sometimes I'm like, why do I need shoes? Like that's just how my brain works. That's liberal. A liberal is the exact opposite. So science, I can see why that's confusing. Good, good eye. Science for what it is, is not a religion. It's, it's an unbelievably effective way of uh, testing and inventing and just creating wealth for the world and, and safety. And it's awesome. Science with the big S is like, are you a science denier? Like that just became a religion. It just became a religion where it's like, how dare you deny? Where it's like 97% of climate Scientologists all agree. And that number has never changed. And somehow it, 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 it's the same thing. Every, it, that's bullshit. Just bear in mind the food pyramid, the science. That was the exact opposite. It was exactly upside down. And it was because it was paid for by the sugar industry. So millions of kids lost inches of, of potential cock when they got older because they got so fat. Uh, just so people could make a buck. Whatever, whatever. Okay, just like I believe in God. God is good. A lot of churches are real bad. That's like science, big ass, small ass, where it's like, I believe in science. I believe in the process of science. But, but big ass is horrifying. It's any time... Something is good. It can be twisted to make real dickheads rich. And right now, science has that, it has the street cred to just become psychotic. And, and uh, this is dumb rambling. Oh, okay. Well, now you're out. I don't mind criticism. Like, okay, perfect example of, um, put user in timeout. Bye. Perfect example of how I like constructive criticism is what that dude just said. Uh, science is religion, said guy using a computer. That's awesome. Because what he did is he added to the conversation, he challenged my thought, and I explained myself. Anytime someone's like, said the idiot, or like rambling, this guy's on coke. This guy's about to kill himself. That doesn't add. No one cares. Like that, that literally means that you disagree with me, but you don't know why, and you're mad. And no one cares. No, people said I was on coke for like the week I had horrible allergies. Because like, I was always like, because uh, I was in Washington and there's all this goldenrod everywhere. So I was constantly blowing my nose. And so um, people are like, oh my God, Owen's on Coke. I'm like, yeah, when I'm, when I'm living with my, uh, my wife's parents, with my two year old, uh, that's, that's usually when I, out of town, is usually when I first start doing a drug. Ha 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 ha. Owen was on goldenrod. Well, I got a golden rod. I think this is a great conversation though, because it's cool like cl clearing that up where science is great. The institutionalization of science is horrifying. It's the same with education. Education is, it's up there with comedy, if not more than comedy with an obsession of mine and, and just a deep reverence. Public school, I think is uh, fucked because man is flawed. And here's something, another real quick thought I had that I wanna share with you guys. Um, who is they, right? I always, I always think about that. Who is they when they're like, they're trying to, and you hear that now you hear, you're starting to hear a lot of conspiracy theories about like people that are setting each other against each other and it's all manipulation and they are coming, they are coming, they're coming. I think they is us. And I think that when you realize you're they and that you at any moment can decide to not be a part of a mass delusion. It's over. And there all are little groups of people trying to manipulate and pull strings. And, but it's their, their, they has, has, uh, has grown. They fed it. What, you, you got two wolves. You got good and evil. What wolf do you feed? You got to feed the wolf, right? So you got good and evil. You have, you have corruption and you have freedom. You know, you have, it's the shadow self. It's the Jungian shadow self, right? Where it's like, um, yeah, let's say two bears. Bears are better than wolf because we're bears. But, but I can't bring myself to say there's a bad bear. I feed both of them. I like that, Jared. I feed good way more, but I keep my bad wolf at least ready for a game. 
He's in he's in game he's in game shape. But I, I keep him muzzled. Because here's the thing, if you kill your bad if you let your bad wolf starve, your wolves can't reproduce. Just a good wolf. That what's the only limit of God? Limits. Right? That's that's why he created man. I'm not gonna get religious. I get it that I alienate people and I understand that, but um Imagine being everything. What are you not? You're not finite. And that's a limit. The one limitation of God is limits itself. So then you, you, you create life to uh, have to wrestle with good and evil. To have limits. To die one day, right? Because your only limit is limits. It's so intense, right? All right. I'll, all right. What do we got here? I'll do some more uh, super chatting. Oh, we got a thousand people. Sweet. This is so fun, man. I, I dig this shit. Hey, man, I think you'll be able to check out my... Oh, yeah, yeah, I got that. Hey, Big Bear, I'm on the app as Hermit Bear and would love to make it official. I oh, already did that one. Just drop my breakfast on the floor. My dog appreciates it, but I'm pissed. Not sure why I wanted you to know that, but keep fighting, BB. Uh, no, I love hearing dog stuff like that because uh, having four dogs with, without Amy here... I'm such a pussy. Like, I'm just like constantly pissed at all of them now. <laughs> Cause it's like, a, they have like a tribe. And, uh, so my whole day is literally just being like, stop, go, sit, stop. It's hilarious. Set you a stream lab. Don't like giving 30% to YouTube. Yeah. You can also do feed the bear dot me or no YouTube PayPal dot me slash feed the bear. That works too, and I'll check those out. I'll read those. Oh, and uh, my bear phone. My bear phone is charging. I don't know if it's charged up yet, but I'll uh, I'll grab that in a second. I don't want to neglect the bear phone. I know I've been neglecting the bear phone, but uh, you know sometimes distance makes the heart stronger. Hypocrisy is the tribute that evil pays to virtue, quoted by Stefan from a book of the guy he was interviewing. That's a great book, or that's a great quote. Hypocrisy is the tribute that evil pays to virtue. Wow, it is like a tribute. And it almost seems like a tribute when, when, when the media or when society, and I'm just using these words generally, I don't know exactly what is asking. It's us, but that's pretty, pretty intense. Is asking for you to believe in something you know you don't believe and you agree. It's almost ritualistic. It's almost like uh, the Eucharist or something where it's like, um, now say that Caitlyn Jenna is the greatest woman in the world. I do. Now say that women can throw a baseball just as fast as a man, and it's only because of society that they can't. I do. Now say that Trevor Noah is, is really funny. And they're like, I can't. It's like, then you will not be allowed in. You will not get your candy, and no one will touch your cock. Okay, fine. Trevor Noah is, is, is hysterical every night when he, when he just says the same Wrong political things with no punchline. No, that was sarcastic. Everyone will know you're secretly taking a shot at him. I want you to say that he is truly hilarious and that Amy Schumer is sexually arousing. But my dick won't get hard. Then get it hard if you want in. You are not allowed at the seat at the table unless you admit to nonsense, boy. Admit that... that Tell me that Bill Nye does not appear to be the biggest pervert on the planet and that everything he says is crazy and he only has a master's degree and that the, the fact he has a master's degree in engineering does not hold back the fact that he can be seen as an a, a expert on two-year-old gender studies. It's like, why are you doing this to me? Because you must admit, you must believe in nonsense or else I can't control you. Do you not understand? Evil is a lie. <laughs> And if you're not really good with lies, you're going to question my shit when I tell you all to kill a million people. You got to first think that Caitlyn Jenner's a beautiful woman. Then you're going to have to think that David Hogg has a great point. And then you're going to, and it just keeps going and going until you will agree with everything I say. That's called fucking hypnotizing people with evil. <laughs> Do not smirk. <laughs> What's that bitch's name? When Meryl Streep gives another condescending speech to America a year after her best friend was outed as the worst serial rapist in American history, you must not smirk. 
You must be like, wow, she looks beautiful, even though you know she's a three. And, and is a fucking asshole. <laughs> All right. The martial arts are not the arts. What a stupid bitch, right? I forgot about that. You must say that Michelle Obama is a beautiful woman and that Barack does not crave Justin Trudeau's asshole. All right. Uh, hey, Big Bear. Oh, I was at the Portland show. So magical. I can't wait until the next one. It's my birthday today. Can I please bear, be verified as June Bear? Yeah. And let me know your favorite uh, song, June Bear. I'll play it for you. That's what I do on birthdays. I'm going to play you guys the Jordan Peterson song, too, for his birthday yesterday. And uh, Portland show was magical. If you want to get a copy of it called Reluctant Warlord, it's at hugepianist.com. And, uh, and of course, Artling just hits another monster home run. This is the uh, art for it. Owen Benjamin, Reluctant Warlord, F-18 planes, uh, a bear head. I just thought that was, that was cool. He threw in no soy on the, on the license plate. So those will be t-shirts made at unbearableshop.com. It's my boy Brandon runs that. I always forget to plug that. And... Uh, yeah, I love that picture. It just sums it up. And the shrug, you see what I mean about the shrug? That's what I was talking about before. It's, it's, there's nothing, because comedy is so great with irony. Like Warlord and Reluctant is so funny to me because you're like, I guess I'll just leave these people. <laughs> I don't really want to, <laughs> but it's cool, you know? I just wanted to tell jokes. All right. I'll read more Super Chats in a second. I'd just like to uh, to go back and forth. Oh, and YouTube, limited or no ads on the reality of suicide. For those of you that, that have seen it, it's literally my brother giving reasons why not to kill yourself. And, um, and what, and it's one of the most beautiful things. It's four minutes long. My brother just, because we're talking about it at a fire and I'm like, hey, can you start over and let me record this so a lot more people can see this? Because sometimes I feel like I have fire privilege. Like at a fire, I get so much like unbelievably cool stuff told to me by my brother. Oh, wait a minute. I got a thing at one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell, uh, I'm going to try and push it a little bit. Uh, see if I, because I, I, I got some more stuff to do here. Oh my God. Amy just wrote, loving the live stream today, baby. Proud to be your wife. That's awesome. She's so fucking cool. All right. Uh, dates are good. Where is, uh, just give me one second. I just want to, hey, can we do 130? 130 instead. All right. So yeah, YouTube feels that, that it's inappropriate. And I'll tell you why this is weird because it's not YouTube. There is no like Gary YouTube. It's enough people complained where their algorithm was like, Enough people don't like this, so Geico won't be down. That's even more troubling. It's almost less troubling if it's just like uh, some ruler of YouTube is like, I don't like that. It, it, it'd be lame, but it's way more troubling that like tons of people are like, we can't let the kids know that they shouldn't kill themselves. We must keep the culture of nihilism. It's 13 reasons why still up. And they're like, yes, it secretly glorifies it. It puts it in their head and it grows like a seed. Ah, yes, perfect evil. But sir, o Owen Benjamin's brother just said 130 reasons why not. That's, that's a decimal point. That's, that's 10 times the reasons we came up with why. He says why they shouldn't kill themselves. And they're like, no, we need the good kids to kill themselves. So that way we can import whoever we want. Uh, and so they're like, report, 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 because that's the motivation. You got to understand someone's motivation to understand why someone does it or else you can't predict the future, which is the only reason to think. Some people are like, oh, you think too much. Why do you do that? I'm like, because that's the only way to predict the future. Time travel comes from thinking. So once this is science right here, this is straight science. If you want to see how much I value science, when you start seeing predictions come true, and um, you start realizing that you're onto something. And then you, you understand the motivation behind somebody, you can predict their behavior. Like a hungry wolf. Why, why does a wolf who had, so you could just be like, okay, 
Every time a wolf just ate, I don't get bit. But when a wolf hasn't eaten in three days, he bites, he bit my dick off. So what is going on? And then if you don't understand what it is, the world is just chaos, right? You're like, sometimes wolves bite me and sometimes they don't. I don't see why. And you can't function in chaos. That's why you need, uh, um, that's why military is so into like training, training, you know, reps, reps, reps. So that like when there's high trauma or high stress, you can still react to training because chaos will freeze people. Not free, like freeze, like like below zero. Um, so once you go, oh, it's a hungry wolf likes to bite things. And then you go, oh, and now you can prepare. Now you can already see the future. You can see a, a future in which your, your son gets bitten by a wolf and a future when your son doesn't get bitten by a wolf because you know what motivates a wolf. Threats to their children or their pups, you know, dominance, uh, the occasional just being a dick, but you can't really pre prepare for that or hunger. And you can do that with people. It's like, I needed to understand the left. I've been obsessed with it for a, over a year now because I don't get the motivation. Or at least I didn't. I, I, I have cracked the code and now I feel a strong desire to share it because I see so many people be like, well, they just said they're drinking up white tears and I got called a racist because I don't like basketball. What? What? And then, and you see this confusion in people's minds and you're like, I have to explain to them why. And it's all about the motivation. And once you see the motivation, everything becomes so clear. It's just like, it just, and, and a lack of chaos lowers stress. You know, sometimes people are like, um, hey man, are you ever not like dialed up? It's like, you're going to have a heart attack, bro. You got to calm down. And don't get me wrong. I may have a heart attack because I, I do work a lot, but I'm not stressed all the time. In fact, I think my stress level is probably lower than the average person because when I feel stress, I, I guess in that, like for a while, I may stress myself a bit, I guess, but I have to learn why. So that way in the future, I'm way less stressed. You know, it's kind of like you get the shit beat out of you a, a, a lot, like, like, like when I was like, when I've like rolled with Crowder, of like the jujitsu shit, and I don't understand it, but like every time it's just doot doot. And I'm just like, eh. and if I don't know why I can't prepare to not be strangled to death. So I haven't put in the work on this one because in my life being strangled to death by a fighter is not, it's up there. It's, it's on the same level of dying from a bee sting. Like, no, it's not happening. So I don't, but, but imagine if that was um, an actual threat, I would spend an incredible amount of time and effort to learn how to protect myself from being strangled to death. And that way, all that goes away. Cause if not every person that walks by me, I'd be like, he could strangle me to death. But once you learn, it's kind of like uh, when people tell me I look so comfortable on stage, like uh, that, that uh, Bellevue show that I put up, people are like, man, it's like, you're just so comfortable. And, I, and it's because I learned, I taught myself. I uh, plunged into the stress of what could happen. A, a heckler, people kept dropping bottles. Someone ran on stage, a joke bombs. You know, like all these things can throw you into chaos unless you know why it happens, how to protect yourself from it. Uh, who's really your enemy and who really is, uh, is just somebody that something happened to. You know, and that makes you relaxed. You know, I bet if you took my heart rate on stage, it probably goes up 10 beats a minute, probably goes from 60 to 70. You put someone who hasn't done the preparation on stage, it's 180, 200, just da, 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 just fear, 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 fear. So when it appears that I may be like a stressed person, in reality, uh, I'm not. Like I... Because when, I, I, I now see constantly when people see a new uh, headline or a new thing and they're like, the world's gone mad. Like, what is happening? And I'm like, do you want to know why it's happening? So you can just like fight it and not and not just be scared all the time. <laughs> What's this one? Oh, this is great. Unbearable Ghost Bear. I plugged this thing yesterday without even knowing anything about him. So I made sure I checked it out because I, I'm just making when I plug things, I want to always try to make sure I didn't just plug something horrifying. So uh, he's hilarious. He put this up, bear to resist, to resist censorship and violence. 
don't know about violence. Definitely censorship. But I think that's great. Like the D.A.R.E. program was so dumb. It's just like compassion for suicide. They're like, hey, kids, let's not do drugs, right? And everyone's like, what's a drug? And they're like, well, I'll show you. This is a syringe. So first, what you're going to do is you're going to cook up the heroin. Then you're going to, then you're, oh, and by the way, don't do any of this. But it feels so good you're going to want to. So this is how you say no to it. You just, the broken record technique. This is real. This is really what they told me. No, 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 like a broken record. And so they're teaching you techniques that don't work at all because that's not how drugs are presented to you ever. No one's ever like, hey kid, you ever get high? It's like, no, it's like, come on, no, come on, no, okay, fine. You drive a hard bargain. No, it's, it's, that's not the world of drugs. So basically they educate you that there is a thing called drugs and this is exactly what they are. So when you see it, you'll know like, you'll know the lingo. Uh, they're awesome. They're so awesome that we need to tell you not to do it. What else do they tell you not to do? Eat candy. Candy's great. They're like, don't eat candy, kids. I'm like, well, I've eaten candy. And man, I fucking like love candy. Like you guys are wrong about candy. So what else shouldn't we do? Drugs. Okay, so what's this barbiturate you speak of, right? And they spent billions of dollars pretty much giving kids a crash course into how to do drugs. That's the same with the suicide shit. It's like, it's like, uh, Anthony Bourdain is finally free of his stresses. It's like, what? You just freed up a bunch of kids to kill themselves and you don't even fucking realize it. Where, cause the reason people don't do shit is social, uh, ostracism. That's now just going away except for good people like me. You know, now people like me, it's like, do not speak the word Owen or Benjamin in a sentence or you will be kicked out of our new aristocracy of awful be like why sir because he does not want to abort the unborn he does not want to mistreat children he does not understand why certain races can get certain words and others can't especially given people's lack of knowledge of actual history and he's hilarious oh and he's committed to one woman and has children and he's like fucking really tall Wait a minute, I thought those were all good things. No, no, those are not the good things. We want to make kids want to die. So when someone commits suicide, we say, it wasn't his fault. It was his demons. And then we give him all the attention that he, he believed he needed, but it was only because he was in a narcissistic spiral, a death spiral, much like an alligator or an airplane. No, what you do is you condemn that shit. You know, you say someone kills himself. What a coward. That way the next person isn't like, imagine living in a world where suicide is, is fine. And then that's when you get press and everyone says your name. And because a lot of depressed people, they just want people to look at them or, or know them or like give them respect. You know, they live in this gray world where they, they don't feel beautiful or physically healthy. They don't have meaning in their life. They don't have love in their life. They don't see the purpose of life. Sometimes it feels so intense. And guys, of course I've had this. So when people are like, Big Bear, you don't know how dark it gets. Guys, guys, <laughs> I know darkness. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the last thing to tell a person like that is that when you do kill yourself, the world will then say your name and say it wasn't your fault. That's... <laughs> Hello, is there anybody in there? Just not if you can hear me. Is there anyone at home? That's someone talking to a very suicidally depressed person, right? And, and this, is, this is perfect. This song is perfect. That's why we love this song so much. Because it tells a story that we don't even realize it's telling. Come on now. I do believe you're feel no, feeling down. Well, I can ease your pain, get you on your feet again. Uh, relax, it's just a little pinprick. By the way, this is the devil's voice. This is the devil. <clears throat> why do you think opioids are killing us? Well, that's why I don't do any. I'm a mid thirties white guy in the country uh, I'm not even going to touch 
opioid pills subscribed by a doctor. Same reason I don't want to be a dictator. I don't trust myself to not go down the lazy warm river of escape. Don't even do it ever. All right. Relax. Just a little pinprick. That'll keep you going for the show. Come on, it's time to go. And then the guy's like, There is no pain you are receding. A distant ship smoke on the horizon. You are only coming through in waves. And this is when it gets tragic. You're still you. But you're just in this warm world of like, ah, it's like angel tears, right? It's like it, clouds are just giving you kisses, right? But you're still you with all your problems. That's why it's like, when I was a child, I had a fever. My hands felt just like two balloons. Now I've got that feeling once again. I can't explain. You would not understand. This is not how I am. And then he's like, I have become comfortably numb. Do you think he's saying that in victory? I've become comfortably numb. No, he's saying like, I don't feel the pain anymore. That's the draw of nihilism. And the way to fight it is to say Anthony Bourdain is a fucking coward. And then people go, you're so cruel. You're so cruel. They might as well just be saying in the comment section, Owen, Owen, it's just a little pinprick. That'll keep you going and make more money. We can tax that money all day. Tell your kids they all should be gay. And I'm like, oh no. It's just, it's obvious. Cassandra, my brother calls me Cassandra now. It's like, Two years ago, he used to call me Podcast Nightmare and be like, dude, what you're saying is crazy sometimes. Like what you're saying is, that's coming, your Podcast Nightmare. You listen to too many podcasts and, and just relax. Let's just have a beer and just be normal. And then lately, because he's seen it, it, it everywhere now. Everyone is. And I think he now respects that I was pretty much right about everything. And that's not ego. It's because I've done the, the, the work in identifying patterns. And so I'm like, oh, this is coming. And, and a lot of people would just forget that. They just scrub that from their mind. My brother does it. My brother's like, okay. So Owen was right about that. So what he's saying now also could be right. And uh, I don't remember what I was just talking about. Hang on. So brother, used to call me podcast nightmare. I don't know. I honestly don't know what the hell I was talking about. Chat. Uh, un uncomfortably dumb. Uncomfortably dumb. Retract your suicide is hot right now. What was I just talking about? I had this great point. Courage is staring in the abyss. Uh, you were talking. Cassandra, right. So my brother calls me Cassandra now. And uh, Cassandra could see the future, but no one believed her. And that's the ultimate hell. It's not really. But I think that was the point of the story is that like, you know what's coming and no one will believe you. It's like, what good is it? It's like having a Ferrari with no gas. But one, but like a cool... Um, quote that I actually heard from the Trump campaign is that um, history doesn't repeat, it evolves. That was used in the rhetoric with Kim Jong-un and I thought, or whatever, and I thought that was brilliant. The future isn't set in stone. It's just the only way to evolve and not just be that broken record is um, to be very honest with what is real and what's coming because this is a team, man. This, this life that we live it's like, we have to tell each other what we know. And you guys do that with me all the time. And that's why I try to uh, represent you guys as best as possible. Because when you tell your truth, when you tell what you see, eventually we can all start seeing what's really coming. Because we all know like a little piece of the puzzle. And together, it, it's, that's where our strength lies. And that's why authoritarians want to, like the Tower of Babel or whatever. Um, they want to dismantle any unity whatsoever. So people just can never, Tower of Babel is a bad reference. The, the point of that was a little different, but like, you know, that's why in so many archetypal stories, and this isn't just because I'm a Jordan Peterson fan. My mom taught children's literature, not as one of these uh, college weirdos, like as a legend. 
where it's like these are the archetypes of the hero's journey. Like I was raised with Joseph Campbell and stuff, not fucking, you, you get what I'm saying. So um, the broken up, like in Harry Potter, the broken up of his uh, heart or soul, I don't know what it was, but he, he has to, they're all spread out and, and he can only fight the devil, Voldemort, when they're all together. And the last one is within himself, I think. I, I don't really remember Harry Potter, but it's a very repeated thing. Like all the rings are spread out. C.S. Lewis does that stuff a lot too. So does Tolkien. And then they do that with our knowledge. Like I, I am speaking you guys the truth of what I see. And so this is coming from my life. And then when you do it from your life and someone else does it from them, their lives, eventually we can start really seeing what's going on. And there's people that all their power comes from secrets, all of it. And, uh, and that's why, that's why they hate me. They would set me on fire if they could and laugh because I'm such a, uh, a threat to them. So is a guy like Peterson. All he said was no. I don't know how I feel about uh, Peterson being rep by CIA. That's too close to the abyss, man. I don't know about that. That's weird. I trust that dude, but like, eh, eh, that's why, dude, I'm telling you, that's why I don't do ads. I don't trust and Whoa, do you guys see that? Just lost 150 listeners like that. It just went, it just went, nah. whoa. I, I think it was CAA. That's wild, man. That's uh. Yeah, dude. And by the way, if you don't think that's a thing, you can talk in your phone and just um, 200 people just just dropped just like that because they'll do uh, words like that. And if you don't think that's real, look at Siri. You just talked to, oh, just went down again. You see that? Holy shit. That's crazy. There's certain things that when you say it, just it just recognizes it and it just cut, 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 cut. CAA is. Uh, Oh, and by the way, the bad move right now is to is to be nervous of that and be like, but I want more followers. I just won't say it anymore. No, no. That's that's the first step to hell. That's literally, that first decision is how you go to hell. Well, if I get more followers, I can do more good in the world. No, that's what everybody says, guys. That's what everybody in academia says. They go, well, if I just get accredited, I know I'm lying now, but if I just get accredited, then I'll have a job where I can do so much good. I'll have tenure and no one can fire me. Guess what? That's not how it happens. They only uh, give you tenure when you're broken. That's why my mom does not have tenure. They give you tenure. They, they, they let the, uh, the cows not have a fence when they know they won't run. <laughs> so fuck more followers. That's why I'm not being a dick when I'm saying this stuff. It's not like, oh, dude, you're, you're overreacting. You got to think long term. You got to think about your 401k. You got to think about your children. You know what I mean? So, uh, I know it, it isn't, you know, you're not going to feel good about it right now, but just, but just uh, say what the publishers want you to say and collect the $60,000 and everyone will think you're smart and great. And I'm like, oh, CAA is my former agency that dropped me when I, I talked about the trans kids stuff and they repped Harvey Weinstein at the time and are responsible for the Me Too movement. That's where Jordan Peterson is now represented. So that to me is a little weird. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And that doesn't, oh, speaking of Peterson though, and I'll read more. This is our happy birthday uh, song I wrote for Peterson. And I'm not saying that there's a conspiracy at all. I don't buy any of that shit when people say it about uh, Peterson. That guy is, is fucking great. I think what happened is he got a ton of fame and success and CAA just comes right in. Same thing happened with me. They're like, he's like, well, I mean, it will help manage my tour. You know, I mean, they're, they're the best. They're, they're very, uh, very conscientious and they're industrious, you know, all this shit. He probably just was like, this is a good, this is a good, uh, good, good idea. It's not, it's a death star guys. I was rep there for 12 fucking years. They, they did so much to hide Weinstein. They were like hiring fixers constantly. They're like, did he, did he rape again? Oh, all right. Rape guys covered up. I'll, I'll read, I'll read everything. I'll read all the shit guys. I'll do a full two hours today. All right. CIA might, might look it up after all. The arts have been infiltrated by communists. Uh, I don't know. All right. So this is the, the Peterson song I wrote. And d don't get me wrong. Peterson's my, uh, my internet dad. I love the guy. But I, just for me to you, Jordan Peterson, don't be rep by CIA. Uh, they fired me while I had a book deal and a development deal because I said trans kids shouldn't be uh, given uh, hormone blockers. Because it's not that what I said was 
was necessarily wrong. It's how I conduct myself. You know, I don't say the names of people. No, you name him. You name the devil, bitch. Not saying the devil is how you fuck it, how he controls you, right? You like archetypes, Peterson? All right, from one bear to another, uh, don't do that. Those dudes do not have your best interests in mind. They do not have your best interests in mind, man. That 10% for your soul is not worth it. All right, here we go. This is for Peterson. And then I'll read all the shit. All right, what's this say? MIT. I already did that one. Asian weans. Uh, which one's this? Here it is. Well, that's weird. I look like, hey, look, it's me just yesterday in the same spot, just like kind of staggered. I'm going to move this over. This is the Peterson song. I did Wayward Son because so many people have requested it that I felt like it was two birds, one stone. I, I finally figured it out. I'm not that good at singing it, though. Kansas has a much better voice than me, so their octaves are all, all over the place. Happy birthday, Jordan Peterson. We wrote a song for you, and I have never played the song before, but it just seemed like it, it fit pretty well. So bear with me, but uh, this one's for you, buddy. Bear with me, get it? <coughs> Bill 16 is postmodern indoctrination. Have you not read every book by Solzhenitsyn? Tell the truth, don't be a liar. Unless you're a gulag cool kind of guy. Freud's okay, but can't go wrong with some young Ian. Never ending nonsense coming from the mouth of Dyson. Your father's hit a whale, now save him. Life is pain, but that's okay. Carry on, Doc Peterson. There is truth in what you've done. Got lobsters reading Carl Young. Now clean your goddamn room. Time to leave your mom and slay the, slay the bloody dragon. It's not so bad being a super angry white man. Grow the hell up, bucko. Don't even try to fight Pareto. It's everywhere in nature. Kathy Newman melted down on the TV. She was a translator of English to batshit crazy. What you were trying to say is what you were saying. Just listen to his bloody words and stop being so goddamn tyrannical. Marx was wrong. It failed. Everyone died. Life is a burden. Now pick it up. God damn it. Carry on, Doc Peterson. There is truth in what you've done. Lobsters reading Carl Young. Now clean your goddamn room. If you can't make your own bloody bed, then how the hell are you supposed to try and tell the world how to function? Bloody catastrophe. Make your bed and then I'll, I'll listen to what you have to say about uh, dismantling everything that we rely on for meaning. Um, anyway, Jordan Peterson, you uh, mean a lot to a lot of people. So uh, much love. Happy birthday, brother. Enjoy it. You're, uh, you're the man. Peace. All right. So thanks to everyone who helped write that one. And uh, yeah, good times. Dude, my buddy Kevin just, just <laughs> so funny. He, my buddy Kevin just texted me a link. He, he, he's like, you got to watch this now. And I'm like, I look at it. It's, it's Peterson on Rogan. And I'm like, bro, that's like my hero. I'm like, I texted you the same video when it first came out. I'm like, I've seen it five times. I'm like, you changed my life. And he's like, bro, it's all like, this is straight up truth. And I'm like, I'm Cassandra. <laughs> like, it, that, that's like why I think I face a lot of shit and why a lot of you guys, um, Without Rogan, I never would have found Pearson. Totally. That's how I feel about Rogan. That's why my bullshit uh, range with Rogan is so big because I owe him so much. And it's not about, and it's not about, uh, I don't think I'll ever be on a show again or anything. It's not about trying to keep that, that, uh, that connection for any kind of like, you know, power or some shit. That's not my motivation at all. It's like Rogan introduced me to Dave Rubin. Um, he introduced me to Gavin to just tons of people I never would have known. Peterson, everybody. And that's why I see 
the method to his madness sometimes when he can have on just a crazy lefty that just is saying nonsense is because uh, it that's the balance that allows him to to uh, exp- like show people uh, ideas that they never would have thought. Rogan like saved my mind for a bit when I was in Hollywood and I was like just drowning in soy. I would just listen to Rogan's podcast like oh. My- because it didn't have the cognitive dissonance. It didn't feel like um, like everything was a lie. Owen is the canary in the coal mine. Yeah, and someone said uh, uh, something about me being like arrogant or don't be so into yourself or something. Saying you're Cassandra is not a brag. <laughs> it isn't. Imagine you have a job where you see something coming that others don't. Like you just work in a tower for a sec. Like you're the tower guy. You're the janitor in a tower. And you see an army coming. And I'm like, an army's coming. And they're like, bro, don't be so full of yourself. It's like, no, I know it's coming. It's like, easy. It's like, no, it's only because I I live in the tower. Like, I'm a free speech guy because that's my job. I see them trying to shut it down. I never would have, I never would have done the nigga stole my bike if I was like working at fucking Staples. I never would have known there was a pushback because I would have just followed social cues and, uh, and not said stuff. But my job is to, like, do funny stuff. Masked Wolf, are you insane? All right, you're in a timeout. Because those are just uh, those are st- um, just stock shit that people say to try and fuck with you. All right. Hey, Big Bear, have you seen the Jordan Peterson versus Ruben debate? If not, I would love to see a reaction on it. Pure gold, keep doing you. Ruben, uh, Dave Ruben? I haven't seen it. I'll put him. I'll put him out forever if he comes back. He's allowed to watch, but he's. I, I no longer think that people just have the right to interact if they don't bring anything. It's funny how Rogan's assistant Jamie always sounds like he's about to cry. <laughs> I never thought of that. I just see this as a hunting party almost. Like the bears, we're all like a hunting party, and someone's just can't shoot, and he's always bitching, and he can't carry deer. And he's not funny and he never knows when to be quiet. And we're like, all right, you're in a timeout. And they're like, no, I I have a right to stay here. It's like, no, you don't. You don't. You don't have a right to be here. If you're you're not like adding anything. And it's not about um, criticizing me. You just have to do it in a way that actually works. It's like if someone sucks at shooting and you're in a hunting party and he's just like eating. He's like, you can't shoot, bro. And and you're like, well, I just just killed the deer. He's like, could have been better. Could have been a better shot. It wasn't, it wasn't a kill shot. It's like, what do you bring? But someone else could be like, hey, Big Bear, took that wing, took that wing. You know what I'm saying? And I'd be like, oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you for that. No, asking questions is not bad. Someone just said asking questions is bad. That's already a question, by the way. But uh, no, I, I'm explaining why asking questions is not bad. If someone says, are you insane? That's called a rhetorical question. You would know that if we didn't have a horrible school system. A rhetorical question is like saying, uh, why are you such a dick? You just said you're a dick in a way that's slightly more um, socially palatable. Palatable. It's called a rhetorical question. Why do you hit your wife? That That's persuasive. You understand? Do you hit your wife is a question. Why do you hit your wife is a statement uh, hidden as a question. I know this because I'm a quarter Jewish. I know the tricks. <laughs> That's a loaded question. Yeah. All right, whatever. Your name's Larry. Uh, thanks, BB, for my stand-up. Starts at five. All right, I'll do that as soon as I'm done with the super chats, and then I'm gonna do the PayPal's. And I'm out. Off topic. Back to the pronoun saying. Let's say I have a black friend, but you insist that his pronoun is nigger. Lefties' heads would go boom, right? Because they have no logical consistency. Two plus two is, is five. If you get candy. Contemplating. Um, whether you would be a lefty in California, uh, California or a Nazi in Germany is an example of the importance of who you surround yourself with. The only chance you have to not turn into a sheep is to not be surrounded by them. Right. And I see that with my strong friends in LA, with the exception of Kevin. I think it's just because he's, he's so dialed into the fitness world and he has, he has such a good wife. And he's just a strong dude. But every now and then he'll, like he said problematic once to me and I'm like, Dude, we have to talk. Guys like you who fear power leave us in the hands of those who covet it. Man up, bro. Run for office with respect. <laughs> well, I'll do my part. I'll, I'll try and change the culture so the weak bitches that want power have to listen. 
That's my role. My role is a cultural leader. It's not a, a military leader. I don't want to be in charge of the army because I frankly don't believe in a lot of, of what we're doing with it. And that's obviously not a shot at the soldiers. I just, uh, I don't want that. It's not in my nature, but I will be a cultural leader. I will to the day I die. You got my, you have, you have my word. I think Westside Bear wrote to me. He's like, you're our, you're our elected cultural official or our cultural leader. <laughs> I was like, so it's kind of, I mean, that's my role. It's what I'm good at. It's what I like. It's what I think the people need. Like, I want people to make the choice to do the right thing. I don't want to be the head of a group of people with a bunch of tools and philosophy to force people to do what they think is the right thing because they can't possibly know what's the right thing. I want to see you become president just so Anne Hathaway would most likely hate your politics so we could use that clip of her saying she is a fan. Yeah, but they have a way to get around that. Look at Joy uh, Reid. I mean, look at her blog. She was literally like, gays suck. And she's like, someone must have hacked my account. It's so, and everyone's like, nonsense, 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 candy, candy and nonsense. I just downloaded the free Tommy song on iTunes. That baby is growing up so fast. Can I be verified as Mick Bear? Well, oh, Mike Bear. Welcome, Mike Bear. Mike Drop, like the MIC. Science is how, is how and what. Religion is why. Great answer. But science is now trying to be why. And that's the problem. And religion is trying to be what? Like the Pope is trying to say no guns and science is trying to say why we're here. And they both need to learn how to stay in their fucking lanes. Justin, wow, that was very generous. Thanks, buddy. I was arguing with some people. They said that I'm brainwashed by religion because I think women should not sleep around. Even though I, sh oh, by the way, I, I, you may make this point, but I just want to say this. Science is proving that. Isn't it crazy how like science is now being like, oh, by the way, uh, religion was right the whole time. This is all right, but the Old Testament is crazy. Well, not if the, all if, if all this crumbles, which does happen every few hundred years, you're going to want to reread Leviticus and don't eat shellfish. I was arguing, so, all right, even though I showed them women are happier when they only have one partner, they thought being a slut wasn't a bad thing. They're crazy. It's, it's, it's scientifically provable that promiscuity does not lead to a woman's happiness. In fact, the opposite. Now, of course, I don't think that should be legally enforced because the assumption that everything we believe is force is why people find a lot of people, uh, a lot of people that think like us or me or mostly us or some of us is because when I say women shouldn't sleep around, they picture force because they think in terms of force. They're like, well, so you're going to get Nancy Pelosi to have a gun and make women not sleep around. It's like, Nope. That's not the assumed thing in my mind. In my mind, there is no for you don't you don't because that's why they like Islam because Islam makes sense to them. They're like women should sleep around. So we're going to cover them head to toe in a potato sack and cut off their clits. Cuz it's all force. Their their morals are in, are enforced by force. I don't want that. I don't think it should be illegal to be um you know I think drugs should be legal. I just think that you should tr you should teach your children the the grave responsibility and um, outcomes that can come from them. Because look, I mean, we made drugs illegal. How well did that work? You can get drugs in prison. In prison, so think you have to make the world a prison, and you'll still be able to get drugs. So it has to come from inside. We are they, sweetie. A gift for a little bear and baby bear. Oh, thank you. That is very generous. Thank you, Joseph Waterbear. Science is a tool meant to explain the natural world. Using it to explain the supernatural wo world is like using a screwdriver to hammer a nail. Exactly. I am a 1010 laborer in New York City. Why don't all the feminists fight for more women in construction? I have met like two women in a construction site and they were both flaggers. Um, I think we all know why. Because they don't really want equality. Um, they're, I mean, we all know why. There is no... There is no... Uh, there's no equality in anything that isn't easy and powerful and uh, financially successful, and it doesn't benefit the government. Stake meme on the screen. Oh shit! I have to, I have to, I have to really have to start reading these. That was a while ago. Does it seem like the left focuses on mental issues too much? I have a friend who constantly posts about her anxiety. To me, it seems counterproductive. Of course, of course, it's the same. They have a, an excuse for everyone who kneels, and everyone who doesn't kneel has no excuses. 
Like even in that video, I'm like, my father had threatened to kill himself and how much damage that did. Do you understand that they've excused people based on just being a woman? Like, it's like, oh, like there, there's been black guys that have murdered people and they're like, well, he is oppressed. It's like, no, my fucking story shows you why I think this because I have experience in this and you haven't lived my life and I haven't lived your life. But like as someone who was terrified of their father going away for that reason, I'm telling you how selfish that can appear to be from a child. It's like, you, you're, you're a piece of shit. It's like, whatever happened to respecting my experience? Because they don't care. They will say and do. Any, if going na 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 meant candy and power, they would do that and never stop. Oh, and interested in your professional opinion of Amy Schumer taking over the stage at someone else's headlining event. Uh, the dude was a bitch. I actually take my hat off to Schumer for that. He should have said no. It's on him. Um, obviously, it's a dick move for Amy to do that. But uh, the fact that she let him means that she was kind of right. I'll try. Just waiting for him to come to the office. Okay, I only have 15 more minutes. Um, the fact he said yes means as a predator, she was right and good at that. Like She looked on the stage and said, I can just take his microphone. And it's your job to say, no, bitch. I'm on stage. And if he had done that, he would have been a legend. Please sing Soy Boy. I don't have time, Joseph. Oh, well, you gave me a All right. I'll just do one round. He's a soy boy. He's so annoyed. He's a soy boy. He feels no joy. A weak chin and soft hands and a lot of demands. He's got memory glands. He says his cat is trans because of all that soy. He's a soy boy. And he's awful to be around. All right, hey Owen, love your bear stream. I'd like to have you on my show Beyond the Pavement one day and help you get ripped. Peace and love, bro. I'm in. Let's get ripped. Pants, feet, balloon hands. Nice. Hey, Big Bear, I camp a lot and recently realized that all the freeze-dried food has soy in it. Does the camping and hiking counter the soy? No, they're trying to infiltrate commies. Please make, a, make me a mod. Pretty please. Much love, Damien, Walter, and the dogs. Of course I will, Bunny Bear. I just, uh, hang on. Hey, Big Bear, just saying some honey money. Loving the streams today. Listen to you while cleaning my room. Much love to you and the family. They hacked Hathaway's mouth, huh? Oh, that's exactly what they'd say. All right, got him. All right, let me make a Honey Bear mod. Bunny, Comment. 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 Comment now. Bunny comment. I'm giving you five more seconds. My cat is literally trans. He got blocked by the crystal. Oh, there we go. You are now a mod. For every person that I ban from the empire, I make another a duke or a duchess. All right, let's, let's watch this kid's uh, stand up. And then, uh, then I'll read a couple of PayPal's and I'm out. All right, so where's the stand up? I might be able to do a minute or two. What he said, it was at five minutes. Does anyone remember? Do you say five minutes? Do you say it was at five minutes? Don't ban people. Let them talk their shit. No. Why? I don't. See, I don't. I honestly don't see the point of that. Societally, yes, but not like in your hunting party. Everyone doesn't have a right. It's it's a it's an oddly lefty idea to be like everyone has the right to be anywhere. No, they don't. It's an honor to be a bear. And if and, and you can be a bear adjacent and hang out, but you better fucking bring something to the table and don't just be a dipshit. If you can do two minutes, you'll get the gist. All right, let's do two minutes. I'm adding it now. It's like, well, I have a right to be here, even though I just say you're an idiot and fat over and over again and say what, question mark, and what? But I have a right. Because you're wrong, even though I don't know why, and I can't argue your point because we all know you are right, but me though, but candy. And so even though you'll, you'll have a much happier life without me in it, you must keep me here because candy. All right, five minutes in, here we go. That was not me. I did not do that. Hang on, is this him? Did you just get introduced? Why five minutes? All right, well, let's just start there. Let's watch together, everybody. That was not me. I did not do that. Okay, let's get serious. Um, who saw the movie Black Panther? Black Panther broke records as the most talked over movie of all time. Nice. That was hilarious. Well done. And those groans are just a bunch of fucking losers. 
Well, if you ever want to balance that, if you're if you're performing in soy country and you want balance, do a do a white one first. Be, let's do a super white uh, one. Be like the English Patient was the number one movie for. I don't know, like what's a white stereotype in a movie theater uh, of scarves of uh, unnecessary. English Patient is way too old. What's like a super white movie, like a Taylor Swift concert? A, a Taylor Swift concert, the audience had the most amount of Uggs or some shit, whatever you want to pick, because that'll soften them up so that you, you'll only lose people that are accepted. They've self accept, they've abs- accepted that they're hypocrites because right there, what happens is, hang on, um, you're going to get funny people laughing, like people that, that get that you're a comedian and they understand context. But there's going to be people that could be your fans that you're losing because you didn't set up the irony. You didn't set up the hypocrisy. So if you say The Notebook was the number one movie where you had girls drinking spice lattes and looking at something on their looking at Pinterest during the movie, you know, and then be like, oh, and also uh, Black Panther was the number one movie talked over and be like, oh, and most of them were dads without kids. Just fucking bam. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> okay, a lot of people say that that joke is racist. No joke for that. <laughs> How about this? A lot of people say that joke is racist, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know. How about this? A lot of people say that joke is racist. What do you guys got? Dude, why don't we should do a, a, a new uh, theme? Writing with the bears. Do you have to donate to become a bear? No, you don't have to donate. People do it because uh, it's, it's fun and it helps me pay my bills. But of course not. You don't have to donate to be a bear. Just uh, get a bear name, ask me, get verified. Fucking have fun with it. It's a blast. All right, so uh, let's talk about it. What, what, uh, what should he say there, bears? So he says, people keep saying that that's racist. Oh, when you say you sympathize with war vets who have seen uh, they can't reconcile, who, they, who kill themselves, but what if some people's depression causes insufferable amount of pain on the same scale? I still think it's cowardly when vets do it. I just think that I may do it. I don't know. I've never seen war and I can't imagine. I think as a principle, suicide is, uh, I get, that's a good question. I'll think about that. I just, looking at Anthony Bourdain, I pretty much think I know kind of what happened in his life. But anyway, so what are you guys saying? So I've always been here and not, you have to wipe your, do you guys have any ideas for this one? I can come up with something, but uh, a lot of people call that joke racist. And I like to say, hang on. And then I say, but it's not. People say that joke is racist, but I say they are jokist. Perfect, that's from Corey. People say that that joke is racist, and I say that they're jokist because they're prejudiced against hilarious things. Silence is good too, though. I don't know, whatever. I just think jokist is a hilarious concept. Here's the thing about racism. We don't even know what that word means anymore. We're just using it. You hear it all over the news, and it's just used to describe things. You're like, here's the thing about racists. We don't need us racists. We feel like it's really watering, watering it down. Be like, it's not like we work hard at it. And now everyone's a racist. Just always just take unexpected turns, especially when you're doing something this heavy. It's not even heavy. It's just for whatever reason it is right now. You know, go silly with heavy, go heavy with silly. So if you're doing something about race, do something silly as fuck and be like, listen, as a racist, I don't appreciate that. Now everything's racist. Actually, I'm going to keep that one. That's my joke, bitch. Things that offend us, it's lost all its meaning, its cultural relevance. So I'm just gonna start using it to get Oh, Jake, that's great. We go to rallies, we dry clean our pointy hats. We can never get a good maid. <laughs> Next time my boss comes to me and they're like, Yeah, can you uh, organize our clients' spreadsheets? Just segment them based on their profile. And they're like, oh, It's all racist. <laughs> you want me to segregate these spreadsheets based on their profile? Nice. Calm down. How about this tag? Now you're next. You're gonna add. You're gonna tell me that this washing machine is whites only. I like where your head's at. Not gonna do that. 
here's the thing, I'm not racist, okay? I have tons of friends who are minorities, you better. all different colors, and I see them every single week when I go down to do prison ministry. Nice. <laughs> I, I knew that's where you're going. It's cool. It's cool. And they've told me uh, I'm the beneficiary of something called white privilege. Oh, and I like that you said ministry, too, because it, it adds a little bit of to the audience like, what do you do, bitch? I go to the prison and talk to them. It, it gives you a, a credibility as speaker. That's what that's called in, in persuasion public speech, which is good on a stage where it's the fact that you actually will go to a prison and talk to people about things that may help their lives allows you a little more leeway than some dipshit. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know what this is. I don't remember my grandpa calling me over and being like, oh, <laughs> all right, here's your white privilege certificate. Anyone tries to make you earn anything, show them this. So I don't know what it means. It's actually because my grandpa is from the Middle East. That's oh. right, he was an Abraham. Joke's on you, racist, for thinking I'm white. Border oh. Arab up here. He's a brave guy. He risked everything to leave the Middle East and come to the safest country in the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't get I don't get why people laugh at that. Like are they mocking America? The white privilege I don't The know. Arab thing be like I'm a quarter Arab, so I only wanna like suicide bomb like a little bit. Be like I just have a lot of snappers. You know, I got like little bottle rockets. So it doesn't really do a big thing. I mean instinctively I wanna blow you guys all up. Alright, let me see here. Uh Alright, I'll try just wait a minute. Let's keep going. No, mocking the Arabs are kind of a dice roll in America. Yeah, but he's a quarter, though. That's a big one. That's a big, uh, it helps because it probably, it, it won't keep helping. I, the left will take everything, but people still have enough logic to realize that if you are it, it gives you more credibility that you don't hate it. A suicide glove, that's funny. Not a full suicide vest, just like a suicide hat. And it doesn't really do do much. It more just like scares you guys into thinking about. There we go. Get it? I guess you're just born with it. That doesn't seem fair to me. Sixteen it's virgins. Really Beautiful. Drew. Home run. Guys, we need to start doing this with my sets. You guys are funny as fuck. A suicide condom's hilarious, but sixteen virgins. Be like, I would blow myself up, but sixteen virgins isn't enough. This guy I worked with in DUI and was in prison for two weeks. He said he smoked weed in prison. Drug laws don't work. Of, of course not. Neither does glorifying suicide. All right, here we go. Oh, dude, Ramadan only lasts five days. All right, we'll do one more joke, then I gotta go. I don't want it. It's, it's, I, it feels oppressive. It's like everyone thinks I'm qualified to do anything. Oh my gosh, I can't handle it. It feels oppressive. People make all kinds of assumptions about you with this white privilege stuff. You might not know this. Do you want to know what I should say? I should be like, yo, and fuck the Jews. And people will be like, well, I'm like, guys, I can do that. I'm German. <laughs> Hang on. You definitely don't know this. <laughs> we get on a bus, or like, just look at this taxpaying homeowner. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got to go. But just be like, uh, how about this for the uh, white privilege thing? Be like, why is it such a privilege that I that through taxes I keep having to pay for all your high top sneakers? Listen, it's not really a privilege to keep giving you all your free shit. Oh, and by the way, you're welcome. How about the fact that all of our tax money goes to you guys? Because by the way, that isn't factually correct. There's there, there's a lot of white people on. The, the, part of the joke is that it isn't fully true, but there's just enough truth in it, and it's so fucked up that it's funny. But just to be like, uh, no, there's, I mean, there's more white people on uh, welfare than black people, but there's more of a percentage of black people, just like uh, school shoot or just like um, police shootings. There's way more white police shootings, but there's more of a percentage of blacks. But, you know, in the cops' defense, they do commit more crime. All right, let me just read these last couple that popped in. I got to go. Sorry about the uh, feed the bears. I will do that tomorrow. And as you saw with the fucking thing I just did, I really will. Uh, all right. Bear me. I want to be Big Sexy Bear. Welcome, Big Sexy Bear. Yeah, like getting mad as, as an actual racist at the fake racism. Yeah, that's hilarious. But I want that, though. I'm keeping that one. Because that wasn't his joke. I'm not stealing his joke. It's just uh, I've been called racist so many times publicly that I kind of need that. All the other ones are on the house, though. 
uh, being mad at people uh, just saying anyone can be a racist. It's almost like a porn star. It's like you're not all stars. Yeah. Because even the concept wasn't his. So I'm not fucking. All right. You got it. My dad is Vietnam vet and has plenty to be sad about and says suicide is cowardly. I disagree with both of you, though. LOL. That's hilarious. No, I'm just saying, listen, if I was on fire, I would definitely kill myself if I had a gun and I was literally burning to death. So I know there's a spectrum. I know there is, but you have to fucking get your like fundamental belief and then work from there. Because it doesn't help anyone about to kill themselves by condoning it. The best thing you can do, even for war heroes that can't handle it, that kill themselves, that I, my heart fucking bleeds for these guys. Still got to say it's cowardly because it doesn't fucking help anybody not doing that. All right. This guy I work with got a DUI and was in prison for two weeks and he said that he smoked weed. Oh, I read that one. Last one. Small request. I've super chatted. If I email you, can I get your special? Yes, you can. Also, I'm doing a cover of Tommy's Hallelujah. Great. Send it. So email me right now. Why don't they laugh at gmail.com? I'll send you a, a code so you can have it. Uh, la, 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 la. Anything else? Hit the like button. Share it. Oh, and don't kill yourself if you're on fire. It, dude, if my eyeballs start burning and my dick is like gone, if it's like, if I, if I get, have to watch my dick burn, I'll have a hard time staying alive. I love you guys. Um, subscribe, hugepianist.com for the new specials. Uh, since, since I don't do uh, commercials, I have to always like think of my own shit as my commercial because that's how I, uh, that's how I can profit. But I don't know. I'm not really selling anything else. I fucking don't even know. Is there anything else? Just fucking, you know, just keep being awesome. All right, later, guys.